A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Of course, if you're just tuning in right now, this is the touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasika and fading out there is the pickleball global ambassador. Daniel Moore, of course, speaking to myself on the intricacies of the new sport, seeking to uh, introduce it uh, globally and especially, you know, ensuring that it penetrates a Kenyan market and of course saying that it's a combination of three sporting disciplines, lawn tennis, table tennis and badminton as well and he says there are a lot of potential locally and if well exploited we can get to another level as far as the new sport in town is concerned but right about now we're talking about Kenya Secondary Sports School Association ball games slated for Eldoret this coming weekend from 22nd and of course joining me on the set right about now are guys who are coming from Dagoretti High School and school known for sport but of course uh, they were not in the public domain for just a few years but now looking forward to rejuvenate themselves and they have toppled upper hill and now will be representing metropolitan region as far as football and rugby is concerned of course Emmanuel Okuna the games master for Dagoretti High School then Hamdi uh, Mohamed he looks injured but saying that of course he is optimistic that when the game starts he will be set and uh, well for the games is uh, the captain for football then Branton O'Koth representing rugby team is yeah. the captain good to join us gentlemen starting with you uh, Mr. Emmanuel what's the feeling like now that you preparing for Eldoret we are uh, really we can't wait for the competition we have uh, been preparing for this for so long now the journey began last year last year around May and uh, we, are, we are the underdogs in this, because uh, for the history of uh, sports in this country, we have not had Dagoretti going for these competitions. But now we want to prove a point. We have proved in the region. We, tried, we started this in first term, where we took our basketball for nationals in Embu. And uh, it was a good show for us. So this time, we are ready to face uh, our opponents in rugby and in soccer. Uh, so we are really set for this show. You are really set and just like you say, you are not known for uh, being a sports giant as far as matter school games is concerned. But now since the arrival of Peter Orero, who is the uh, chairperson of Kenya Secondary Sports Schools Association and also doubling up as the principal for Dagoret, what has been the secret behind now your rejuvenation and some sort of, you know, or getting a revival in terms of the lost glory of the school? I can say it's the passion, the passion uh, of Mr. Torero in sports, actually holistic development of a, of a Kenyan child. We are talking of also academics, it's not only pro sports, but it's this passion. Torero is known in the country and in the region for being very passionate about uh, sports. Is not only a uh, netball coach, but uh, soccer, basketball coach, and also uh, very passionate about rugby. So being the chairman of uh, KSSSA, and also for your information is the vice president of uh, the East African yes. Sports Federation of high schools. So he really gives a lot towards the motivation of these boys. And um, it, it's just, it, when he, he came to Dagoretti, I have been there myself since 2012. We were not known for sports. But when he came, we felt rejuvenated as teachers and students. So he's been able to cultivate this culture since he came last year. And uh, that's why you can see these uh, fruits that you're seeing now. Hamdi, now speaking to you, I'm going to bring you into this particular conversation. What do you make of your capability going into these ball games, considering that there are a lot of giants in waiting, just waiting? For you, the likes of you know Kakamega High School, the Green Commandos. By the way, participating in National Super League and not doing bad, and also Saint Anthony from Kitale. Do you think you'll be a force to reckon with? Yeah, I believe because they got the opportunity to play in Super League. I think if Orero could arrive some years back, we could be also maybe somewhere there. But uh, I believe the players, the way they are motivated in training. The way they are, they are also play, playing regional game, Nairobi regional game. They are also having match today at one with the, the number one top league. They are number two now. They are playing at home ground. I believe today we will get the three point and we will catch up with the number one. So we are performing well. Like last evening I was there watching the training. It was 
The training was so wonderful. I just saw them and I say, no team can beat us. We what's are. what's the mood in the team? How do the players feel like uh, going into this championship set for next no, weekend? The the players are not in any pressure. They believe that their aim is to win the East Africa, not even the nationals. They believe there's no secondary school game, any team from secondary who can beat them. They believe in themselves. The coach, uh, I want to thank the coach, Joseph Makoha, really put little pressure on the players. He just showed them how they are capable to play. When we, like uh, the day I got injured, we are just from home, no training. We just had training only on Friday. I remember we were playing with prison. So he told us, you are capable guys, without training you can make it. We went, the first five minutes, I am the one who scored, then I was injured 15 minutes later. We, came, we, we won the match 2-1 without any substitute, because we were less. So I believe the boys, they can, I, I don't, we don't have in our mind the likes of Kakamega. We believe from the first stage, we have in group, I think, even a team from Northeast and from my area. From first match till the end, I believe it's a final match. We have to win. Branton, you guys seem to be of ambitious and quite of optimistic. Listening to uh, Hamdi speaking, he says that their top target is East Africa, not even the uh, Kenyan uh, championship set for next weekend. I also reading from the same script with him that you're aiming for something bigger, better than what's lined up this weekend. Exactly. Our target is to be in East Africa, Rwanda. We're not targeting only nationals. Us is, our goal is to be in Rwanda and to win and to represent Kenya well. You, you look muscular, man, and <laughs> you, you look like you've thoroughly trained. <laughs> What's the mood in the camp as far as rugby is concerned? Of course, talking about rugby in the metropolitan region, we've always heard of other names, mm -hmm. which is not decorated. Mm -hmm. What has happened? We're really working hard. That's one thing. We're really working hard, training all, all day, yeah? Discipline, you know? And we are committed. We play for each other. That's us. As the great, we don't care about the rest of the teams, what they, they do, we do our things. Yes. I'm also reliably informed that you are in a partnership with one of the top uh, local clubs. Do you think that has also been uh, a secret behind uh, your coming uh, into rugby scene as far as Nairobi region is concerned? I'll, me, I'll give uh, the big up to our coach. He's the one who's doing most of the things. Because it's not just only about playing it, it's also about mindset. It's trying to bring our mindset to be that of rugby. You're here to win. Yeah? It's not about just passing the ball, it's not about tackling. It's about also what you think about. So, yeah, the coach, our school coach, Victor. Mr. Okuna, talk to us about maybe what you seek to do to ensure that now besides rugby and football, you also penetrate into other disciplines. Is there that plan now that you have Orero is a netball expert? I can say we are really up to the task. Uh, me, being a teacher and being an enthusiast of sports, we have uh, got um, a, a, a dual approach to this. We not only will make them shine in sports, academically we have got elaborate plans for them so much so that you can look at where when Orero was in Upper Hill we would say that uh, he's, Upper Hill is a giant in, in sports but also academically they would beat so many schools Dagoretti included we who are never in sports so th these lads are, are not only doing uh, sports stuff but seriously studying and uh, I can uh, uh, confirm uh, this now that we are also going to make a mark. We say that we would want Kenyans, if they are reading the newspaper, they look at us from behind and from the front. Behind for sports and front for academic success. And it's going to be. So we are ready for this. In the past, there have been accusations of, you know, poaching of talented uh, uh, footballers, rugby stars from these schools. So I don't know whether uh, the same we have done at Dagoretti, on a light note though, or you've just nurtured your own talent from zero to hero and they have risen through the ranks getting to this level? What I can say is um, um, there's nothing, nothing has been there as poaching. Mm -hmm. You can ask them, they've been there since Form 1. And uh, 
it was just a change of mindset. I can tell you, Mr. Wasike, last year, the whole of December, when other schools were away for holiday, we had a camp for a whole month. You know, dieting and training from morning to evening. In the evening, we take these boys for studies. So for Dagoretti, nothing has been there as poaching, that I can assure you. So we have our own grown uh, solution, homegrown solution, that these boys, they have been able to just, you know, we have a population of 1,300. These boys, you can turn them in, into whom you want. You can turn them into, you know, whichever game you want them to, to play. You just have to talk to them and take them to the field. We have got resource. So I can tell you for a fact that we, we have used our boys who have been there since Form 1. Hamdi, I know you're looking forward to being a professional just besides playing for your school, Dagoretti, after the Form 4, after the secondary education. I know you're expecting being a, a top-notch footballer, maybe featuring for one of the high-profile local sites or even overseas like Victor Wanyama is doing for Spurs and uh, Michael uh, Engineer Olunga for Girona FC in Spanish La Liga. What do you think we can do as football stakeholders in the country to ensure that, you know, uh, such kind of arrangement is it gets to fruition i think they should bring back the the project of unicef they used to have in schools they used to support one school in every region so i think that project will help because if they bring like a school for nairobi like the Goretti high school to be a soccer center or sports center maybe to support them by the end of four years, you will have professional footballers like Michael Olunga, the way he came up from Upper Hill. Many players from Upper Hill are playing in the senior league now because of those projects. The same as Kakamega, they have benefited from those NHA, uh, UNICEF projects. Yes. So I believe those projects, if they will be brought back by the government, they will really help us. And do you think there are also proper mechanisms in terms of grassroots structures to ensure that you know there are a lot of potential at the local level at the village level but you know they lack platform with which they can showcase their prowess do you think we've done enough to ensure that uh, the untapped talent can get a platform I, th I think little have been done like from where i come from garissa yes since i was born till uh, from Dagore till i came to Dagore, i never saw a coach it was my pure talent till today. And people think that I went through coaching. But I say we have a lot of talent in Kenya. So I believe so there are some areas that have been much neglected in this Kenya, in this country. Uh, as much we know it is due to the clans or maybe society, they don't like to focus on the talent. But I believe if the government will, most probably the county, we have now counties, we have devolution. I think the counties should have to work on that. They have to support the young kids from, from, the, from nursery level. I think if you discover your talent as early level as from class one, class two, by the time you are in four, four, you are, you are more than Messi, I believe. <laughs> Is that the, the Europeans have done that and they have made it. If we do that, it will be the best. Kenya have, more talent even than that, that Croatia. They are just almost four million. You are, you are more well, Kenya is overpopulated. overpopulated with yeah, million. I believe not only that, even in high school games, when you watch, sometimes when you're in bench, coach just put you in bench, you watch the match. You see, Kenya, we can make it even without Lunga, without Onyama, without those stars in Kenya, Premier League, we can make it. But it's lack, lack of opportunity, lack of finance in, this, in the sports sector. I don't know what's going on in Kenya, but I believe one day, one time, some of us will come up and help the Kenya. That's a bit of a challenge to football stakeholders led by Football Kenya President Nick Mwenda probably is watching and he's going to consider that. But now talking to you, Branton, rugby, unlike other sporting disciplines, mm -hmm. is associated with, you know, scholars, professionals. Mm -hmm. What do you have to tell other Kenyans outside there, the young people who are passionate about the sport? Uh, is it high time now in as much as you venturing into rugby, you also need to learn and school properly because we've seen the likes of William Buck, Andrew Amonde, mm -hmm. uh, Humphrey Kayange, the retired rugby professional. Mm -hmm. All of them are scholars, top-notch professionals, big them. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. First of all, a person who plays rugby 
He has a good mentality. He has a strong Why one. Why the way? A strong one. Because you risk a lot. You risk everything. Get me? So your, your brains tend to form, be strong. Even when you study, you get it. Yes? So, and also rugby needs people who are fast in thinking. You need to be fast, very fast. That's why you see we have Kina William Baka, the champions here. Eh? Colin Sinjera. Colin Sinjera. Because they are fast thinkers. They think very fast. The game itself motivates you to be like that. The moment you play it, you just find yourself. Yeah? So, personally, what inspired you to venture into rugby uh, uh, amongst other sporting disciplines? Mm -hmm. Is it the body size? No. <laughs> rugby is not about the body only. I've, I've been enjoying uh, playing rugby since I was small. Yes. Yes. My uncle is a rugby player. He plays for Sweden. So, every time I used to see him training, I felt encouraged. And also my parents, they keep motivating me to keep on playing. Yeah, so the support from the family and friends, the motivations, and seeing it by myself makes me just want to play. Emmanuel Okuna, now I'm going to speak to you with regards to a uh, scholarship. Uh, is it high time now schools, Dagoret included, start offering scholarship to, you know, talented uh, sporting guys outside there so that they can nurture and work on their career? Actually, talking on scholarship, we have uh, a big uh, challenge resource-wise. Um, if you look at the vote given to schools for activity, yes, it's so little that um, like a population of Dagoreti, it's less than 500,000. And you can imagine we, have, we need to have schools going for nationals, East Africa. It's quite expensive. And I can assure you, being in sports, I usually sympathize with administrations because you realize one weekend you can spend even 30,000 on sports yes. because you need to register teams. Like this time alone, we had uh, racket games, we had uh, rugby, we had soccer, under 16, under 19. So one weekend alone, you spend so much. So that this 500,000 in a year, it's just a, a drop in a drop of an ink in an ocean. And you realize um, that, that, that some of the at times we have players who are from humble backgrounds, and you need to retain them in school. So that's why we are appealing to stakeholders. Like for our case, we have got so many of them from humble backgrounds who cannot raise fees. So it is time that scholarship be given. From like now, Dagoretti, we have a rich alumni group so that these people, if they can just come together and help these boys, we have got uh, uh, people like KJ, the current MP, yes, uh, who is very supportive, is really helping us, and is he'll is, actually flag us for nationals. We have people like uh, Alfred Mutua, uh, Kinudi Mbugwa, the state house controller, we have Waititu, those are guys whom no sportsman, though. Yeah, they, <laughs> they have been into sports. People like Dennis Maweru, the former MP. Yes. Yeah, yeah. KJ was in, uh, in drama, yeah, Dagoretti. So we hope with these stakeholders, if they can just come on board, people like Njoroge of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, you know these people there. Yes. Duarte Dua of Resolution Health. Duarte was actually a rugby player for a long time in Dagoretti when he was there. So we hope that for scholarship, these people in the camo, if they come on board, they can really help us. Coca-Cola is known for this, Airtel, and Brookside. So if they can come on board to help us, uh, help those people from humble backgrounds, it can be of good help to the schools. Hamdi, I know football is such a strenuous entity in terms of specialization into the same. How do you manage multitasking between academics and football? Because you have to uh, juggle between the two for the sake of balance. How do you yeah. manage to do that? When in our school, I say it's a big challenge first. Because when you are in class, we totally concentrate in class. We, we know this is what brings us to school, this class, this class time. Like Monday, we have practical bio from 4 to 4.40. We have only 40 minutes to train. You, you only carry yourself as early as by, by 5, you should be in, in the training ground, 30 minutes 
training, go back, take your supper, go to class. Night time you have exams or you have lessons or you read for yourself. So I say it's the program of school. We know sports time is a different time, academics time is a different time. It's, uh, but you, in, sometimes you find yourself in difficulties. Maybe when you come from the match, you're tired, but your friend, your desk mate, they are good boys. I say they are brothers. We call ourselves brothers. The Goretti. We say keep your brother always. So it tells you, brother, it's only like one hour remaining. Read. You read. You do assignment. Then you go to class. You go to dorm and sign to dorm. Yeah, I believe. But it's the time management. It's the time management that help us. And Branton, over to you. Mm -hmm. Our rugby scene. Mm -hmm. Kenyans have done very well last. Uh, uh, season of HSBC World 7 Series, Kenya managed to surpass a 100 point mm -hmm. mark and of course getting to the finals twice mm -hmm. under Innocent Simiu. What do you think about rugby standards in the country now that we are going into the World Cup as far as San Francisco Championship is concerned, starting from 20th to 22nd, a three-day tournament. What do you think about rugby standards in the country? Rugby, we are good. Our Kenyan rugby team is very good. Very good. Yes? But it, we need to work on our discipline somehow. The discipline part is, break, is making us to lose our concentration. That's it. But we are good. And we know, I know we are going to win Kenya because I'm a fan of Kenya. And I know we are going to win. We are the best. And yeah. We are the How best. has it been like for Dagoretti partnering with Impala Saracens? You've managed to learn a lot? Yeah, we have. Like, we have been getting some support from them like training sometimes yes so we are, we have learned a lot even during the holidays when we are not in school if there is no camp we get we go to impala and train do you play like friendlies against them and gauge your uh, ability sometimes not all the time but sometimes this is the touchline on y25 if you're just tuning in right now we're talking about k triple s a games lined up this particular weekend in eldoret and of course we're hosting uh, Dagoretti High School representatives from football and rugby and their games, Master Emmanuel Okuna, Amdi Mohamed, of course, captain for football at the middle, then Branton Okoth, uh, captain for rugby. All optimistic that they will cruise as far as Eldoret Championship is concerned, saying that their main target is not only the nationals, but the East African Championship set for Rwanda. But as we wind up, Emmanuel, your expectations going into Eldoret this weekend. What should we look forward to as far as the Goretti High School is concerned? Okay, Mr. Osike, we are going to Eldoret as uh, uh, I can say we are the underdogs. Because we've not been on that stage before. We've seen underdogs though, yeah. uh, sparkling during World Cup. So you can do the same? Yeah, we hope that will be an inspiration for us. But we are going there as underdogs, but with experienced coaches, uh, Joseph Makoa for soccer. Uh, Tom, Tom, Thomas Magunga for soccer, uh, Victor uh, Walgwe for rugby, and uh, Orero himself. So we are going there as underdogs, but we hope to surprise teams. If you look at the pool, uh, soccer pool, our pool, it looks an easy pool. But it Where is in the pool? We have all Bosat from Olkalao. We have Shimba Hills from Coast. And we have uh, we yet to be uh, known a school from Northeastern. So we hope that they, we, we, they will not give us much headache. But, uh, you know, a team is a team. Uh, you can't despise any team that comes on board. So we, it's just the hard work that we are, we are going to have in Eldoret. And, you know, some of us, when I, I had had the talk of a timeline, some teams, when they look at how well we are prepared, they think of Dagoret, we are training from morning, to evening. No. We train from five. Some of them come from class at five to five forty. Then they back to class. So it's all about discipline and time management on our side. So we hope that Eldoret is going to be a good memory for us once we live on 28th. Hamdi, who inspires you locally as far as football? is concerned and now talking about the ongoing world cup of course today third place playoff beating three lions of belgium against red devils uh, three lions of england against red devils of belgium then tomorrow final the blue 1998 world cup champions against croatia 
what do you think about the World Cup? What has been the standout moment for you? But before that, who inspires you locally as far as soccer is concerned? Michael Olunga Ogada. Why Olunga? I thought you would say Dennis Oliech. No. Olunga was from high school. First of all, he's from an humble background. Yes. To high school level, to Upper Hill, school prefect, became top scorer, went to the national, although he missed to, to St. Anthony, came three years struggle in Kenya. The, the last year I went and to the Gormaya. And he just did something remarkable. He scored an A. Yeah. Performed very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, performed very well. Contrary to expectations, you know, people have always expected footballers not to perform very well, to be doing well in class, right? Yeah. So I think the work that he put during the Gormahia, that inspired me a lot during those games. Then what he did in Sweden was another historical moment for him. So I believe Michael Lunga fits me. Also, internationally, I like Lingard, Jesse Lingard for England and Manchester United. I like the way he press the ball. That's how I play. You I play in the same I, position I, as Jesse? I play as top man. I play the, the all forward line. I can play anywhere. But I like the way he play. I like to the way that uh, he gives all that he can for the team. That's why that's why I like him. Jesse you Lingard. also like Jay Ling's swag. Uh, no, 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 I don't do <laughs> that much. Those shenanigans yeah. and side shows. Yeah. But World Cup standout moment for you and who's the player that has impressed you? Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe, the 19-year-old Frenchman. Yeah. He's, I think he's a good role model for the young kids. Yeah, he did what others could not do in the past World Cups. Branton, your final word? What do you tell Kenyans as far as the expectation in terms of your performance is concerned? Mm -hmm. And overall rugby? Yeah. Uh, well, as you go to Eldoret, we are going to win Kwanza. I'm assuring the Nairobi people. We are going to represent our county well. I'm confirming to our governor there that, yes, we are going to win. That's it. And about academics, rugby, our team, we perform well. We really perform well. We sacrifice our time. We sit in class and study. So you have to be, you have to have academics first before the rest. You need to balance everything. So have good grades, play well, and that will be okay for you. All of them are saying that they are uh, good, both in class and even co-curricular. Of course, talking about Kenya uh, Sports Secondary School Association ball games lined up this particular weekend for Eldoret and speaking to Dagoretti High School representatives Emmanuel Okuna, Games Master for Dagoretti, Amdi Mohamed, Captain for Football Team, then Branton Okoth, Captain for Rugby Team, joining us on set to dissect and talk to us about the expectations ahead of the showpiece in Eldoret. My name is Max Wasike. This is The Touchline. Don't go away. Stay tuned, but always a pleasure having you on board. I'm wishing you very well and Remember to keep discipline, right? Thank yes. you. Cheers, man. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Coming up next, the fan favorite segment, the fans on where we're taking a look into the ongoing World Cup.